So, the last type is what's known as a petostatic tube, okay? And so, petostatic tube, essentially you've got a pipe, again, I've marked the centre line of the pipe. First off, you've got a fluid flow coming in, okay? And next, we've got two tubes. This is the peto tube, okay? And basically, it's, basically, it's a bent, bent pipe with the, uh, with the entrance to the pipe facing the direction of the flow, okay? And that's known as the peto tube. And then we've got a pipe off the side, okay, and that's called the static tube, okay? And we can connect these two tubes together to form a U-tube manometer, okay? And we've got P1 above the static tube, and obviously P2 at the entrance to the pito tube. Pito tube and static tube, obviously you combine the two, you get pito static, which is the type of uh, measurement device here, okay? And there's a pressure difference between P1 and P2. We'll cover that in a second. And so we've got a velocity C1 passing over the static tube. Okay, okay. And we, if we position the static tube far enough away from the entrance to the pitot tube, as, it, as it's shown in the diagram, <laughs> it means that C1 is unaffected by the presence of this tube sticking out of the, uh, um, of the wall of the pipe in the flow. Okay. So we've got velocity C1, which is the velocity of the pipe. Now... But C2, okay, which is at the entrance to the pitot tube, is zero, okay? Because essentially what you've got is you have um, your flow in this pipe, okay? And that's just going to be, that's going to be stationary. It's not going to be moving. And so the velocity, the velocity of the flow at the entrance to the pipe is zero, okay? So we, that's called, basically, the flow at that point stagnates, okay? It, it stops. It comes to rest, and so we have P1, which is the static pressure of the fluid, okay? And we've got, from Bernoulli, we know that the total pressure equals the static pressure plus the dynamic pressure, okay? So this is Bernoulli's equation, again, without the Z term, because we're dealing with a horizontal system. And so the total pressure is P1 plus one-half rho C1 squared plus equals P2 plus one-half rho C2 squared, okay? But we know here that C2 is zero, And so, since Z2 is zero, the dynamic pressure at the pitot tube is zero. And so, from that, we can say that the static pressure at P2, okay, is the total pressure of the pipe, okay? So the total pressure equals P2 plus P1 plus one-half rho C1 squared. Okay. And so that total pressure is also called the stagnation pressure, as I said. Because the flow stagnates at this point, we can call that the stagnation pressure. Okay, well... Well, from this, we can work out... We've got a pressure difference, P2 minus P1. Notice in this, the pressure difference, P2 minus P1, is the other way around... And that's because the pressure here is higher, is lower than the pressure here. We've got a, we've got a, um, the YouTube manometer is the other way around, okay? This, this level is lower than this level, whereas with the previous ones, the pressure was the other way around. And so the pressure difference is the other way around, P2 minus P1, because we want a positive value, essentially. And so we can use a YouTube manometer to determine P2 minus P1. And we, again, we've got the same sort of thing. We've got this HP and this Y value. And if you work out what P1 is, okay, sorry, the pressure at, at, um, at this point here, okay, if we call that A, say, then obviously that's the pressure of the manometer fluid multiplied by the height, okay, and we've got the pressure of the flow, the, the fluid that we're measuring multiplied by Y, okay, and so you've got P1, plus, sorry, plus rho G Y, okay, plus rho M G H P, okay, and you can Rearrange that, same method as before, so if you want to look it up. And you end up with this equation. Again, notice that P2 minus P1. It's the other way around compared to the Venturi meter. Okay? And for a gas, it's the same thing. We can neglect the density of the gas, and you just end up with this equation for the pressure differences. Okay. Well, to, to, to determine flow rates, we need to look at the velocity again. And so you can apply Bernoulli's equation. We know that Z1 equals Z2. 
and C2 equals 0, so you end up with this equation, this one here. And obviously, rearranging for C1, you put C1 on one side, you get the pressure difference on the other side. Multiply both sides by 2, divide by rho, and you end up with C2, C1 squared equals 2 times the pressure difference, divided by the density. And obviously, you square root it, and you get the value for C1. And so we, had, we end up with this velocity, okay, of the flow. And so this is what, you know, well, as I showed you at the beginning, there was a Peter static tube on the side of an aeroplane, okay, this little thing that pops out. Well, they, it, essentially, it measures the pressure difference, okay, and by using this calculation, you can work out how fast the plane is moving through the sky. Okay, the same thing on the side of a boat. You might have the same sort of device, and it's measuring the speed of the boat through the water, okay? And so this is giving us airspeed, in a sense, okay? Now, with a gas, the alternative configuration is something that looks a bit like this, okay? Now, this is, this is what, this is a basically the, um, a cross-section of what I showed you on that first slide, you know, the metal thing, okay? And essentially what you've got is you've got a, the pitot tube, okay? And it's through the middle of the, basically, the static tube, okay? And so you end up with these, basically, you can, it's all one device, okay? And you end up with the pitot tube and the static holes are on the side of the pitot tube, essentially. And so you've got this sort of double-walled tube here, okay? And C1, is, like I said, is going to be sufficiently far away from C2. And you'll get a, so you'll get a, a obviously, this is the stagnation point, which is going to contribute to P2, which is obviously the pressure this side. And we've got a static pressure P1, and that relates to this side of the tube here. So it's exactly the same sort of system, okay, but a slightly different configuration. And again, all the same equations apply. It's all mathematically identical. So the total pressure equals the static pressure plus the dynamic pressure, okay? The pitot tube measures the total pressure, and the static pressure is obviously measured through the holes on the side of the, of the, of the device. And so the difference, the pressure difference, is the dynamic pressure and can be measured using the YouTube manometer. Okay? So we end up with the same thing, the pressure difference, because obviously we're dealing with a gas. We have no velocity, we no density of the fluid that's passing, just the manometer. Density, okay. And we've got a value for C1, which we calculated earlier, okay. And obviously, you notice with this equation, we've got P2 minus P1. Well, you can basically, if you want to, if, depending on what you know and what you don't know, you can stick that term in here. And so you have the same thing, same equation. So the air speed, or the, you know, the C1, the velocity, fluid speed, okay, this is the square root of two times the pressure difference divided by rho, okay? And obviously, you can replace the pressure difference with rho m g h p. So, that's covered um, static, Peter static tubes, okay? Okay, so today's lecture, we looked at flow rate measurement equipment, we looked at a venturi meter and a sharp-edged orifice, and they work in very similar ways, okay? And with a sharp-edged orifice, we've got a discharge coefficient, which is the coefficient of contraction multiplied by the coefficient of velocity. So you end up with this equation for the mass flow rate with a venturi meter. And we've got the pressure difference for a liquid and the pressure difference if you're dealing with a gas. Okay, and with a gas, you neglect the density of the, of the gas because compared to the manometer density, it's very, very small. And the other type we looked at was a petrostatic tube. And the equations for a petrostatic tube are slightly different, okay? But similar principles apply in terms of working them out. So for a liquid, we've got the pressure difference is rho m minus rho times hp, so that's with a, with a liquid. And with a gas, we have the same thing. Notice that with a Peter static tube, P2 minus P1, with the Venturi meter and the sharp edged orifice, it was P1 minus P2. Okay, and then we've got the velocity. And obviously, the other form you could write that is for a gas, 
is by replacing P1 minus P, sorry, P2 minus P1 with rho GH. 